Hello, in the last video we talked about inet script and, and in the example we spoke how you could use inet script which can be initialized whenever your cluster is rebooting and you want to make sure that whenever your cluster is actually restarting it should install set of software or packages could be some libraries could be datadog agents which we discussed in our last example what we did we we redacted our api key our secret so consider this api key as your secret and uh, we didn't put anything over there over here but in a real life scenario you would actually have some sort of key over here uh, but would you be comfortable exposing your key like this um, there should be a better way of putting up your keys right so azure databricks has something called as secret and secret scope wherein you could just variableize your secrets like this and instead of putting them as a raw plain text you could bind them under a secret and use that instead of, use that variable instead of putting it as a raw text so let's learn uh, how you could create variables and utilizing secrets scopes and the secret values the first thing first you could need to create a secret how do you do that um, you pick up your azure data bricks you could use the ui or you could use the cli as well for the purpose of the demo i'm going to create it using the ui so it's going to be after the hash type in secrets and then create scope hit enter and that's gonna give you a page wherein you could just create the scope so my scope name gonna be datadog api key and that's gonna be creator and you could map it map your key walls all your secrets and everything all the secrets you want to maintain in azure data breaks with azure key wall and that's the benefit of using azure you got the first class support from entire azure workspaces or resources so i'm going to bind my key vault with databricks i'm going to go to the databricks and go to properties and pull in the vault URA first and then going to put in the URA in place of the dns zone and then i would need the resource id what it's going to do is it's going to bind this particular resource azure key vault with the secret scope I'm going to hit create and this is going to create the scope for us. All right, the scope is created. Now what it has done is it has just listed whatever API, whatever secrets we create under this particular key vault. It's going to list everything under that scope, which was Datadog API. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and create our secret. Um, so that's going to be data dog. So you've got your secret scope and underneath the secret scope you would have your secret and then the value Super secret value. I don't want to show that and then I'm going to create remember the secret That's what we're going to use and now you can come up to your Cluster go to your cluster and you can go to your advanced setting and since you see there are no environment variables you could go to the environment variables and over here you define the magic so how do you do it you define your variable which you want to use in the global inet script so that's going to be data variable and it's going to be equals to within a curly braces close the curly braces and your syntax is going to be secrets slash name of your scope secret scope that's going to be data dog api and then your secret which is going to be data dog and if i go right over here you could just use the data dog api and now if you don't remember the secret scope one of the way is you could just pull up your terminal and open up 
the data break CLI we have a separate section for data break CLI so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first configure configure using the token and I'm gonna come back to my Azure portal go to my data breaks and I'm going to open it and pull in the host name which is this one put it right over here and then the token my token is going to be I'm going to come right over here user setting generate the token and that's going to be my token come back over here and now we have the CLI configured what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a secret list scopes and there you go you see that this is your scope and it is bind with your Azure key vault so if you just type in uh, use this variable you could just copy this variable and use it in your variable section uh, you could also list down all the scope so what you could just do is use database seek data break secrets list scopes and then the name of your scope that's going to be datadog api and underneath it all it's going to list all the secrets for you so now if you go to your vault again and if you uh, just try to create one more secret so you cannot edit or do any crude operation and just the read operate except the read operation from the data break cli if you're managing using azure keyword so uh, created by a GUI and super secret key and once it is created now if you come back to your CLI and just list down the scope again you should see that automatically list list all the uh, the secret and that's the new one which we created so coming back to our original question this is our scope name I'm gonna go back to my cluster configuration put it in the environment variable and followed by the key which is going to be data dog and that's pretty much all um, and restart just gonna confirm it before this I'm going to I'm gonna go to my admin console go to my global inert script and then we just gonna come back right over here and we can just define whatever variable we have just defined right over here which was the uh, data breaks API which is going to be a dollar and then the name of the variable which is going to be data variable and if I hit just confirm and then if I just restart um, the variable with the cluster name um, so it's still restarting uh, after the restarting um, I'm gonna probably restart it because I've just now pasted the command and now it's gonna take the effect and now if you just run the uh, run the cluster config again you would see that it has picked up the new value from the variable um, the values won't be shown uh, because um, the values are redacted uh, because um, data bricks understand these are sensitive information you don't want to put that into your variable in a raw text however there are um, ways or hacks you could just see your variables not recommended for production use case all right that's about it i hope this was informative thank you